Gentlemen, it is great to see you. Listen, what makes Hamilton more relevant than ever in these times that we are currently living in? Um, what's so surreal about the show is that um, we haven't changed a word of it since 2015. And yet, I think because it brushes up against the origins of this country and all of the flaws and contradictions therein, it resonates in different ways depending on where we are as a nation. And so, um, you know, immigrants, we get, a, we get the job done, resonates in a different way during the Trump administration, which has been so anti-immigration. Uh, um, it's like a rallying cry now. It was a laugh yeah. line in 2015 uh, between two folks from somewhere else who were fighting in the Revolutionary War. Um, I remember seeing um, King George's songs in London at the height of Brexit, and when he sings What Comes Next, Do You Know How Hard It Is to Lead, You're On Your Own, uh, that resonates in a different way. And in this moment where um, black and brown young people are taking to the streets, um, asserting that black lives matter, um, and so much of our country is talking about what we stand for and what we won't stand for, um, the language of revolution in the show resonates in a different way. Saying this is not a moment, it's a movement resonates in a different way. And so I'm, I'm sort of awestruck at the fact that different things in the show pop out depending on where we are as a people. Well, I think that, you know, we made the show to question and investigate why some stories are told and some aren't. And there's clearly uh, a, a foundational problem that so much of the, you know, the, the, the lives of these, these men who were made into monoliths aren't examined in a way with the kind of rigor and approach that allows us to, to, to try to explore the dichotomy between people that talked about equality and yet en enslaved uh, you know, countless and, and thousands and thousands of, of, of humans. It's just, you know, it's, uh, it's something that we have to engage in now in a way uh, that, that perhaps the moment has allowed a, a deeper kind of conversation for something, a sin that has existed for hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. You know, Tommy, everybody at Broadway World wants to congratulate you on being a brand new dad just oh, with you. your wife, Michelle Williams. This is a question for both of you. Um, both of you being fathers now, how has that changed the way you look at life and the world with everything that we're going through now? It's something that, you know, obviously is, uh, you know, sort of this heightening of a kind of awareness of, of a sense of of duty, um, of a sense of your role in the world and in other people's lives and, and trying yeah. to accept the responsibility and be as accountable as possible um, to, to whatever the moment needs, uh, which is constantly changing. But there's just a heightened sensitivity and, and awareness. Lynn, for you. Yeah, it's funny, I watched the show. I was a new yeah. parent when the show opened. Yeah. Um, and I was not a parent when I wrote Dear Theodosia, which is the song where Leslie and I sit downstage and sing to our newborn children. Leslie has had a daughter since yeah. performing in that moment in 2016. He is singing to a daughter, I am singing to a son. And watching that, res that resonates for me in a different way. Uh, knowing Leslie and his family, uh, knowing who, I was very clearly picturing the child I was singing to yeah. and whoever was in the 10th row who got my eyeline uh, when I would sing Dear Theodosia. Um, but the, you know, the responsibility of, of, of living true to the lyrics in that song of, of making a better world than the one you grew up in. Um, that falls to us again and again, and we fall short again and again, but we get up and we keep trying. Yeah. Gentlemen, I thank you. I cannot wait to watch this live like everybody else is gonna do around the world and just the wide audience that Hamilton is now gonna be given to. I thank you guys from the bottom of my heart.